Welcome back to Digital Wandering. And in front of us here, we have my Nexus 5. This is a device I only had since 2021. So this is a used device. Originally came out in 2013. And this is the Android phone. Under Android, it was supported uh, by Google for about three years of updates and security patches. So hasn't received updates and security patches on the OS level for like six years. Now, one thing good about Google is that although you only have for the Nexus and Pixel devices three years max for updates and security patches, you do still continue to get updates through the Google Play Store for your apps. And that's for third-party apps and Google apps. But since this device is so old, for me, it was a, a no-brainer to use it on a Bluetooth Touch. Like, what am I losing? Plus, um, most of the people I saw on YouTube demoing Ubuntu Touch were using the Nexus 5. So I thought it was a good place to start. But if you're going to decide to use Ubuntu Touch, you will want to know what phones are available. So that's what we're going to talk today about and let's just show what we have here okay so what i have here pulled up right now i just did a search for ub ports ub ports is the organization that is currently developing ubuntu touch and uh on this page and let's just i just want to show here what we're using is the morph browser let's see Okay, so this is the default browser for Ubuntu Touch, and that's what I'm using to search here. And right towards the top of the search results here, we have this page here, which has the list of devices. And that's what we're gonna wanna look at. And as you see right now, it has, you see, choose devices. So there's 60 devices. I also have information on this page on how to install. So let's just click here. And on this list of 60, there are tablets and smartphones. So on this particular list, uh, now this is the mobile version of the list on your desktop. You do have an option of looking at all smartphones only or tablets only, but on the mobile version, it just uh, combines into one list and you don't have an option of sorting it, but that's perfectly fine. Um, for what we're doing today. So you see this long list here of phones. Now they're listed in tablets and they're listed in how successful the port of Ubuntu Touch to the device is. So more higher up on the list, uh, the more successful the port of Ubuntu Touch to the device. And also they have this long bar underneath the name of the device and that is functional. That shows you, that's like almost like a progress bar and how successful the port of Ubuntu Touch to the device is. So as you scroll down, uh, that bar will shorten as the port uh, to the device becomes less and less successful. So devices towards the top of the list are going to be the ones that you're gonna to wanna to look for. But so I want to scroll down to show how long the list is and the different phones here. Some phones have the benefit of, of, a, of the UB ports installer and some do not. And if you have some of these devices, it may be something that you want to look to. Well, let's just start off with the Nexus 5, which is near the top here. And I just scrolled past it. Here it is, the Google Nexus 5. So one of the more successful ports of Ubuntu Touch. So now I just clicked on the name of uh, for the device. And what it does is it pulls up another page that gives you even more detailed information on the overall progress of that port. And you see that just about all the different features work on the Nexus 5. One feature that doesn't work is the hardware video playback where you see this X here. Uh, the X means that it's not functional. And that's a real detriment to me because 
uh, that means that the there is a uh, default video player app on this device and it does not work on the Nexus 5. I am able to get around it because there is a video player app that I downloaded from the App Store that is a lot that allows me to play videos in this device. But I, you know, I really want the default video player app to work. So that's one negative here with using the Nexus 5. But just about everything else works. You see Hotspot, it has this puzzle piece here, which means that it's working partially. Also, a wired external monitor also has a puzzle piece there, which means it's partial. And this is the key here with it, where it tells you everything here that is uh, what these symbols mean. Okay, so that's the Google Nexus 5. Uh, but the most successful port of Ubuntu Touch to a device is a well smartphone device. I got to continue to say that here is the OnePlus One. That's the most successful. Now, this list is not uh, set in stone. It does fluctuate. So what I'm showing right now is what's showing on the list for the successful porting of Ubuntu Touch as of right now. Uh, things change over time. But as you see with this, everything pretty much works. Hardware video playback works on the OnePlus One. Uh, the only issue that I'm seeing here is the hotspot. That's partial. So it's, it's not that it's not working, but it's only working partially, apparently. So this is the actually the best device, in a sense, that you can get on Ubuntu Touch as far as a smartphone and the successful features here. Now, one issue is with the OnePlus One, as I see it, is that this is kind of hard to get right now. When I go online and I search for a OnePlus One, it's very rare for me to find a working device at an attractive price. I find them to be very overpriced uh, for working devices. Uh, it's rare. And now this is a phone that I believe came out in 2014. So it's fairly old right now, like seven years old. And, but I think because in the resale market, they're valued. So it's very common to see these in good condition for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, to find one for under a hundred dollars that's working. And one issue here, and let's just go down here. We looked at the features. There's also other information here about the device itself. And you see that you have storage options here. Let's wanna look at that of 16 gigabyte and 64 gigabyte. The 64 gigabyte model is the one that you really want because that one also comes with three gigabytes of RAM. The 16 gigabyte model only comes with two gigabytes of RAM. And that's similar to what I have right now. That's exactly what I have here right now with the Nexus 5. Uh, so for me, although it is functional, I would rather have more storage and more memory. That's a major detriment to the current device that I'm using. It's uh, two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage. I'm someone that likes to have a lot of, of media on my device as much as possible stored locally. I do use the cloud a lot, but I do like to have things stored on my device. And having a device with just 16 gigabytes of storage and two gigabytes of RAM is a detriment. Uh, so having the Max is definitely something that you want. Unfortunately, the Max version isn't as available and it will be for a lot more money. Uh, often the only cheap ones that you'll find for this device are devices that have physical problems or are being sold just for parts. Uh, so that's one issue here, although it has one of the more successful ports of Ubuntu Touch for the OnePlus One, I find it hard to get at an attractive price. Um, also on this page here, uh, you have the information here for installing also, this one, you don't have to actually do any prep work for it. It's just uh, connect your phone to your computer and use the installer, it looks like. So that's all also a benefit here. So it's the OnePlus One, but it's hard to get. Let's go back here. The BQ Aquarius that's listed here is a tablet. Um, 
So that may be of interest. I don't know how hard that is to get. I did try to search for it once and I wasn't finding any results. So it may be hard to get. Uh, another device here that I think is extremely attractive uh, for Ubuntu Touch is the Google Pixel 3a. And as you see, it's very high up on the list. So this is one of the more successful ports of Ubuntu Touch. And the great thing about the Google Pixel 3a, so yes, it has a very successful port of Ubuntu Touch, as you see here with all the green check marks, which means that it's working and it's functional. Offline charging is partially working. Offline charging means that you can plug in your device to a power source while it's off and it will charge. If offline charging doesn't work or partially working, what it means is that if you connect your phone to a power source, it will like power up the phone so they can charge it. So it will turn the phone on. Uh, so I don't, to me, that's not that big of a, an issue, but it may be a bigger issue to some people who prefer to have their phones off while it charges. Uh, so that's offline charging. Wireless external monitor doesn't work apparently, and hotspot is partial. I think we've seen that a couple times here. And again, this is the key that explains all these symbols. Uh, so why is this one of the more attractive ones to me as far as um, using it on uh, Google, uh, excuse me, on Ubuntu Touch? Well, this is a 2019 phone. And then the phones that we discussed earlier, the one I'm using right now is from 2013. Uh, the OnePlus One, I believe, is from 2014. So these are very old phones. This is from 2019. Uh, so this is still fairly recent. I find that it, you can get this fairly cheap online. Uh, when this phone originally came out, it was like $400. And I've seen it being sold for under $100. So it seems to be really available. Partially is because it is a, a fairly recent release. And um, so you could probably find this for very cheap. And uh, also at high and very good condition as well. You know, as phones get older and older or devices get older and older, it might be harder to find them cheap and at and in, in good working order. But this is still a fairly recent uh, release. Also, if you look at the defaults here, 64 gigabytes of, of RAM, 4 gigabytes of memory. These are the defaults. So these are the ones that you'll find. Whereas the OnePlus, where, you know, it's, it can be harder to find the 64 gigabyte, 3 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte storage, 3 gigabyte of memory model, at least from my searching. This is the default, so this is the one that you're going to find, and this is really available right now. You do have to do one preparatory step in order to install Ubuntu Touch. That's a little different than the OnePlus One or the Nexus 5. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, to prep it. I just connected it to my computer and ran the installer and uh, it all went well. One of the things that's kind of interesting on the Nexus 5 and on the Nexus 7, that's another device that I've used uh, to uh, work with Ubuntu Touch and use it on a device. Uh, the installer, although it, it it's an excellent installer, it does take a long time. I, it took me hours for each device to try to get it to install. So I think a lot of times you just want to connect it to the installer and let the install, well, connect it to your computer and let the installer run and just let it do what it do. Um, and maybe, you know, sit back and watch a movie, uh, you know, because it's not a quick process, at least in my experience. I use the Mac to um, install uh, Ubuntu Touch on my devices. I don't know if that makes a difference. Uh, but my experience, it did take a long time. So if you watch the installer video online, it looks like it's a very quick process. And it may be for most people, but for me, uh, it took a long time. But each time it was successful. So that's the most important thing. Now, although this is a great phone, it's a very recent release. You can get it for very cheap. Uh, it's readily available. And the port is really successful on Ubuntu Touch. Uh, the specs are going to be a lot better than in, in importing Ubuntu Touch to a phone that's eight years old. You're going to have more storage, more memory, more processing power, probably a better camera, the whole thing. So this is where I would say that this is probably one of the phones that I would be looking at the most if I wanted to add Ubuntu Touch. But there's one major problem 
with doing that. And that this phone, since it's a 2019 phone, Google uh, supports their phones for like three years. This phone is going to get the next version of Android, Android 12. So although it has a great uh, port of Ubuntu Touch, and it'll probably be a great experience in using Ubuntu Touch, this is still a really good Android phone. And I'm thinking about getting one because I've seen these phones as cheap as $50 used online. I'm thinking about getting one. And but I don't know if I'm going to put Ubuntu Touch on it since I already have other devices running Ubuntu Touch. Um, and I think even though I think that uh, Ubuntu Touch will be a better experience on the Pixel 3a, it still is a phone that will run Android 12. And I really want to have a phone that runs Android 12. I have a lot of Android phones right now and none of them. I have a couple on Android 11, but none of the phones on Android 11 that I have are going to get Android 12. Uh, so it's really attractive to me to get the Google Pixel 3a, but I probably will run Android on it until it doesn't get any more support from Google on the OS level. And then I may at that point put Ubuntu Touch on there. Uh, but if you are a hardcore Ubuntu Touch user, I think this is a, a very attractive phone to look into the Google Pixel 3a, especially if you do not like Android. I mean, if you really do not want to use Android. Uh, this may be the phone that you get and put Ubuntu Touch on it. But there's a lot of phones here that you can choose from. I mean, phones and tablets. Uh, I can't really speak on the tablets that much other than uh, the Nexus 7, which is here. Well, and actually, that's the Wi-Fi version. Do they have one listed here for the LTE? Is there a separate one or is that the only one? Uh, oops, let's see here. Boom. Yeah, this is the one I have right here. The Google Nexus 7 2013 LTE version. And the progress bar is a lot shorter on this one. And actually, it doesn't go into all the detail that you saw with the uh, ones that were higher up on the list, but you see how the, the shorter progress bar. Then to tell you the truth, uh, the experience on the Nexus 7 is actually still pretty good, even though uh, it's not as a successful port as on the uh, other devices that we've shown here. Uh, but it's still a pretty good experience. And knowing that, I'm very curious about some of these other devices that are further down the list. Although the further down the list, you see on those other, uh, the ones that we had the detailed list on, all those check marks uh, for what works. As you get further and further down the list, certain things do not work. And uh, this is why the, the what works detail that you have here for the ones further up uh, on the progress bar is so valuable because you know beforehand, before purporting, porting uh, Ubuntu Touch to a device, what works and what doesn't, you really want to look into that. Like for example, in the Nexus 7, uh, the camera doesn't work and having a working camera is something that, you know, many people are going to want to have on their smartphone or tablet. Okay, so this is just how you would go about it. Look uh, along the list. See if you have any of these phones already currently in possession. Look at the process of porting Ubuntu Touch to your device. Or if you uh, don't have any of these devices, you can look in the resale market to see which ones you can get that will give you a performance and experience that you that will meet your needs. Uh, but I think they do a wonderful job here in trying to present um, what to expect as far as how Ubuntu Touch will work on your individual device. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show this today. I, I really love you using Ubuntu Touch. I use it pretty much every day. Um, so I, yeah, I do think it's a, a definitely excellent operating system that's worth using. But thank you for watching. This is Ubuntu. This is Ubuntu Touch. This is Digital Wandering signing off.